Hey, everybody, and welcome to a Holy Rust Revival. My name is Rob Smith, your host. I'm standing here in the middle of beautiful Mississippi on a very hot July day. Uh, it's about six o'clock in the afternoon and it is still about 90 degrees um, in, in the late July. But anyway, we're not gonna let that bother us. We're here today to talk a little bit about a rig that I've had for a long time, actually, uh, but just never have uh, documented or, or done anything about it. And really, I'm gonna share you the story on this old 1977 F100. It's kind of special. Um, this old truck has 50, a little over 50,000 original miles on it. Stayed in the barn for about 25 years. Uh, it originally was purchased by my grandfather, Nelson Smith, and uh, that's my father's father. And uh, I was born in 1973. This truck was purchased in 1977. January actually of 1977 and my grandfather passed away in 1980 or 81 the best that I can remember and figure uh, so I was young when he passed I was uh, less than 10 years old uh, about eight or nine years old one of my most vivid memories of my granddaddy Nelson uh, is he took me fishing in this truck when I was very young and we went out to a place called Siples Mill just out uh, on the northern side of Kemper County. And um, I don't think many folks actually are privileged to be able to go fish out there, but but my granddaddy was. Uh, we backed up to Siples Mill Lake and sat in the back of the truck and stuck, stuck the fishing poles in the holes of the stakes on the side of the truck. And uh, what a wonderful memory that was. And that's really probably the fondest and one of the only memories I have of my granddaddy. And he spent a lot of time with me, but it's just kind of funny when you get back in an old truck, in an old truck that you were in when you were little and your granddaddy and I was bouncing on the seat beside him, probably looking out the back window. Stand, we didn't wear seat belts back then, you know. Heck, I probably rode in the back of the truck for who, who all knows. Um, but it's just that every time I get behind the wheel of this truck, I think of that memory, I think of my granddaddy and, and that moment that we had together. Never will forget it as long as I have this truck and even after. But I hope to keep this truck for a long time because it's been in the family since day one. So let me show you my 1977 Ford F-100. So the original color of this truck, this is the original color. It is a jade green. And <laughs> the story is everybody hated the color of this truck. Um, it, 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 to me, it's beautiful. It is absolutely gorgeous. But I guess back in the 70s, the rest of my family wanted a um, uh, red truck or a black truck or something of that nature. And my granddaddy was drawn to this color and he loved this color in spite of what everybody else thought. And you know what? When I decided to repaint it, I put it back the exact color that my granddaddy got it when it came off the showroom floor. And I'm glad I did because it's a beautiful truck and it catches attention everywhere we go. But the reason I parked here is, do you see this pasture? Uh-oh. <laughs> there were some gunshots. Did y'all hear that? It sounded like that was at my parents' house. You know what? Let me go check on my parents. Uh, they've been having a problem with rattlesnakes around their house. Uh, I'll be right back and we'll finish this story. Okay, y'all, I'm back. I, I, I don't know what that was. Those gunshots were coming from this direction and it, maybe it was across our property line. Uh, there's a creek back there and I, I'm gonna go check that out a little bit later, but it was not at my parents' house, so I don't really know what it was. Anyway, back to the story. This green truck might've had something to do with my granddaddy's I guess profession or he farmed, uh, farmed this land. Um, this pasture, as you can see, it's probably more than half a mile long or three quarters of a mile long down through there. And at one time there were watermelons all down through this pasture. I have heard stories where my grandfather would start here and hoe one row and it would take all day long 
to get down to the other end on one row of those watermelons. And I promise you to this day, I cannot stand a watermelon because that's how I learned to count when I was little, uh, was counting watermelons going on to a truck. But it was very profitable. And if you're in Mississippi and you have ever heard of Smith County watermelons, before there were Smith County watermelons, there were Kemper County watermelons. Now, one thing on this truck where I deviated from the original was in honor of my granddaddy and him growing watermelons. And I call this the watermelon truck because that looks like the color of, you know, part of the rind of a watermelon. But originally, these wheels were a silver color, kind of the color of the center cap, but I painted them the color, other color of the rind of green on a watermelon in honor of my granddaddy, just so that when I looked at it, I could tell that story. And by the way, these are the original wheels and the original hubcaps. And I also dressed up that little ring in there with the color of the truck, just to kind of fancy it up just a little bit. But other than that, the truck is all original as it came from the factory and i'm trying to keep this truck that very way um let's just look down through there look how straight that truck is beautiful straight truck straight hood original glass in it original bumper grill everything is original this side of the truck just looks great now i did a few years ago put a bed liner in it just to kind of keep it from rusting over time and look i just pulled it out of the barn and i haven't purdy it up yet so it's going to be in a car show this weekend so that's one reason i've got it out was to get it in a car show brayden's going to put his 67 mustang in a car show and i'm going to enter this and i am going to beat his tail uh, when i get this truck detailed uh, from his 67 mustang so we're kind of having a little competition with one another all right let me show you inside Okay, as I said, it is all original. That's the original floor mat. That's the original seat. This is probably the worst part of the truck right here is, is this seat. And you know what? My granddaddy's rear end made that happen. So I'm not getting in a hurry to fix that. Um, I am a little embarrassed of the steering wheel and you can fix these parts right here, but I've just decided to go ahead and buy a new steering wheel. I'll tell you what, we'll do a steering wheel installation in a little bit, and I'll do that at the tail end of this video. So just show you some snippets of how I, I put that steering wheel on. But look at that dash pad, isn't that beautiful? Since it stayed in the barn in the shade for 20, 25 years, that just looks beautiful. The original mileage is 53,618 miles. All the gauges work. Blinker lights work, dash lights work. The AM radio is original and it does come on, but I, it hadn't, I don't have any sound coming out of it. Um, may try to get that fixed, but regardless, I am gonna leave the AM radio in it. Oh, and this is a beaut right here. It's three on the tree, y'all. Three on the tree. My granddaddy loved him some three on the trees. I actually have the 67 Ford that he drove before this truck, and it's got three on the tree with straight six-cylinder engine, all that. But, you know, the old truck, look, light works. All that's good. All that can use some cleaning up and, and fancying up a little bit, but it's not bad. It's not bad at all. It's definitely a good going-to-town truck. All right, I got something else special to show you. Let's come on around to the back. Now the tailgate itself, the tailgate in the rear of the truck was the only part of the truck that was getting a little bit of weather uh, that was beating down on it while it was in the barn. And the tailgate was in bad shape. So I was able to find an original factory tailgate from a 1977 Ford. That's just not what came on this truck, but it is what came on a 1977 Ford. I gotta do a little touching up on the bumper and the various things before I take it to the car show. But let me show you this. This is special. <laughs> I have got to show you this paperwork. So I actually had in possession of the original 1977, <laughs> look at that right there, 1977 Ford book. 
Um, okay, the wind's blowing a little bit. Got the warranty information. I have the actual original title application where my grandfather, Nelson Smith, applied for the title. And look at this right here. Isn't that special? I have the original title. And 01 right here means that's the original owner. And as I told you, my name is Nelson Smith, my middle name. So I took this title in to get an antique tag about 15 years ago. And uh, she looked at me and looked at the date on there of 11477. And I was three years old at that point. And uh, she said, "Was this your, you purchased this truck in 1977? Because remember, my middle name is Nelson. I said, why, yes, ma'am, I did. And she sold me a tag to this truck. And I still have the original owner's name on the original title and the tag tagged to the original title. So that's just kind of cool. I might get in trouble for showing this video and, and sharing that information. But you know what? I was Nelson Smith and I was riding in this truck at three years old. Check this out. It came from the dealership with eight miles on it. So that's uh, documentation showing the odometer reading. This is a owner's card that you could get with the VIN number on it that you could, I guess, take this sticker off or keep it in your glove box so you'll always know what the VIN number was. This is, what is this? I'll fold it up here. Uh, Okay, that's the original, <laughs> look what he paid for it. Originally, $4,131, and he paid a check, paid by check. My granddaddy never believed in going into debt, and uh, so he paid cash or check for everything. So there's the light jade, uh, eight miles from the dealership. There's all the extra anemones and steering. <laughs> it was basically the only anemone that it had it on, and I'm sure he thought that was crazy to have that on there. This is, I believe, the, oh, I'm sorry. I have two hands here. That's the insurance. So he paid on a brand new truck in 1977. Insurance costs were, oh goodness, where is it? Mm, it's not on here, but it was it was actually twenty six dollars for insurance, and the original tag cost two dollars and fifty something cents. Oh, had to show you this. Apparently, this is one of the first trips my grandfather took in the truck. He had one of our cows slaughtered in DeKalb. Had look at there, Granddaddy ain't good. Had uh, had rump and. Uh, loin tip and rib and short ribs and brisket and sirloin and t-bone look at all that granddaddy ate really good in 216 of 77 so this was just about a month after he bought the truck and i guess he went to the ponderosa and had a cow uh, cut up and put in the freezer uh, to feed the family so that that's kind of cool that i've got that original receipt so anyway, I, I thought you would enjoy this documentation. It's kind of cool to have all of this. And uh, of course the mice have been eating on it a little bit, as you can tell, and I got to grab it before the wind blows it everywhere. Um, but it's just kind of neat to have all that original documentation. Cool, cool, cool. I know you want to see under the hood of this beast. Now, this is original. This is as it came from the factory. There's nothing that has been really done under this other than just clean everything up and get it going again but it is it is original from the factory factory paint and everything or what's left of it rather so this is a straight six 300 with power steering that's kind of nice in 1977 it's got the old um old uh, electronic ignition from ford uh durispark i think that's what it's called the durispark box which is right here. I had replaced that. Um, replaced the radiator, pump, uh, distributor cap, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I'm gonna fancy all this up before we get to the car show this weekend. It's gonna look a whole lot different, but I thought I'd show it to you now so you can see a before and after. That is the original carburetor that's on there. 
Everything is original. Everything is, if, is, is as if it came from the factory from Ford in this truck. It does not have power brakes, but it does have disc brakes on the front, which is a, a very good added benefit. And it's got washer fluid and it works. It actually works. So I thought you like, might like to see under the hood, the old power barn as some like to call it there. She's not pretty yet, but she will be pretty by the weekend. And this old straight six runs beautifully. And my granddaddy loved him a straight six. And I can understand why, because look how easy this thing is to work on. Spark plugs right there. Fuel pump right there. You can even screw the oil filter off and even get a wrench down there and drain the oil without ever even getting under the truck. Now tell me why you would not want a truck like that today. This is just, this is too easy to work on y'all. And that's why I'm going to keep this truck for a long, 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 long time. It's a good one. It's a great one. All right. I'm going to pull her in the shop in a minute and we're going to put a steering wheel on this bad boy and call it a night. See you in a minute. All right, y'all, let's put a steering wheel on this thing. Did I mention to y'all that it was hot in Mississippi? The sun is about to go down and it's still in the 90s. Man, I don't have a fan blowing. I can't have a fan blowing because you can't hear me. I've got a fan in the shop, but it'll blow your hat off. And it's great when it's running, but you can't hear a thing. All right, so I have gathered tools in an effort to kind of keep this short and sweet. And I have also done one thing already before I started the camera. There are two screws back here on the back side of the, the steering wheel that hold the, the horn button on. And a lot of people make the mistake and they overlook those two little screws in the back and they start pulling on this. And what that does, it pulls the, the actual rubber off of the <laughs> steering component. And it, this one thing right here costs $275. So if you can take care of this middle section, you really need to. Um, so don't forget, there's two screws, Phillips head screws, on the back side of the steering wheel. You pop out and this thing just easily lifts out, just like that. It's got two wires on it. One is the ground for the horn button, and the other one is the positive side. And you basically just pull those off and set that to the side. Now, <clears throat> you can see inside, well, you may not be able to see from that angle, but there's a nut that holds this whole steering wheel on. And you can see where those two, maybe you can see right there, that's where that screw comes through to hold that on. So I'm gonna take my impact gun and we're gonna knock this center nut off. That's a 24 millimeter, by the way. And I promise you, that's not a 24 millimeter bolt because it did not come from the factory with metric back in 1977. <clears throat> but this fits rather closely and it's a very heavy duty uh, impact socket. So that's why I'm using that. All right, let's stick that on there. is something else right there all right i'm gonna put my nut over here where those screws are so i can keep up with it now this is the absolute hardest part of this project and the first thing i'm gonna do is put a little deep creep in there that's some penetrating oil that'll kind of get in those splines a little bit while i'm setting the puller up it might have the opportunity to get down in there and penetrate just a little bit all right, I've already selected the bolts. I just have this universal kit that I picked up. I think I got this at a garage sale actually for about a dollar. So anyway, um, fine thread bolt. There's two holes in here. Well, first of all, I got to put them on this. This is the, the T part of the puller and I need to back this back out so I can have plenty of room for my bolts. So you set this up and yeah, let me come out some more. All right. So this end of this goes on the end of the steering shaft. And you need to be careful that it stays right in the center so you don't booger the threads up uh, for your nut to go back on later. But you set this in place, run the bolt through the puller. 
and then thread it into the hole in the steering wheel. And we do the other side the exact same way. So there's two bolts on both sides of my puller. Let me thread them both in as far as they can go. And you really only need to do it as far as they'll go by hand. That's all you need. Then you start running this down until it hits the steering shaft. So in essence, what is about to happen is this is going to be pulling, well, we're going to be pulling the steering wheel off the shaft. This is going to be pushing down on the center shaft while this is pulling the steering wheel off the shaft. And you know what? I missed something. Let me go get a half inch socket. I'll be right back. I made a ratchet, half inch ratchet. Some of you might be saying, well, put that Dewalt impact on there and just get after it. And, and that is a possibility. But I like to take it kind of slow and sweet because I sure don't want to. <laughs> Look, I have done these before where I have slaved and worked for hours trying to get a steering wheel off. And quite honestly, you'll say a lot of bad words trying to get a steering wheel off. This one just popped off. It, <laughs> did y'all see how hard I turned that? And look, I promise, I promise that I didn't do that before I turned the camera on. I, the only thing I did was take that little middle section off and this thing is coming off. Look, look, what? I know you can't see it, but it's, it's already loose. <laughs> I cannot believe this, that this steering wheel came off this easy. <laughs> look at that. Did you see that? I am so glad I caught that on video because normally it's a whole lot worse than that. A lot worse than that, but that, that was that was too easy. Something's gonna have to go wrong in this process. Bad wrong. I bet it was that deep creep. What you think? I told you that was some good stuff. Okay, I'm just looking at the blinker assembly in here. It all looks good. You know, uh, I'll tell you what I might do. I might get an air hose and kind of blow this out. I see there's some, there's just a little bit of dust in there. Let me get an air hose and let's do a little blowing on that. I'll tell you something else I've learned in life doing this stuff. In my younger days, I would look at that and say, oh, that's, that's terribly dirty. That, that just can't be that way. And I would take all that apart and clean it and put it back together. And guess what? When I put it back together, it, nine times out of 10, it won't work. And then end up having to buy a whole new harness. And you know what? We're just gonna, since it's all working, even the hazard lights work. Look at that. You hear it clicking? The hazard lights even work. So we're just gonna blow this out a little bit. We're gonna make sure that's good and clean. I might even turn the key on and make sure the blinkers are still working. That blinker works. That blinker works. We are not touching one more thing. We're gonna put a new steering wheel on this baby. Okay, here she is. And I purposely had the wheels kind of locked straight forward, so I'm gonna put the steering wheel on there. There is no spline on here that makes it go in a, a certain way. So there's no key spline. So you can just kind of put it on wherever it looks like it's straight up and down. And that's it. It's, it's on there. Oh, look at that. Ain't that pretty. Ain't that pretty. Man, hey, uh, 
I was looking at my chicken yard out there. There's chickens out here on the farm and we're working on a watermelon truck. We're working on a farm truck. So what do you get or what is, well, let me see, how does it go? Um, got a dad joke for you. So if a hen is just sitting there staring at her salad, what is it? If a hen is just sitting there staring at her salad, <laughs> it's a chicken Caesar salad. Get it, Caesar? Caesar salad. Anyway, all right, I'm sorry. That, that was terrible. That was terrible. I am so sorry about that. All right, let's get the nut back on the center. And look, we did not booger the threads up, so that thing is going right back on there like it should. Hey, it's, it's unbelievable how easy this is going. This is crazy. It's a little crazy. Something's wacky. Okay. There it is. Look at there. Even the, it turns the blinkers on and off. So there's a little bitty tab on the steering wheel that catches the blinker and turns it off. And that's even working. Oh, that's working great. Okay, so let's see if we can get this back on. All right, so this is supposed to go on a little tab right here. Hey, did I tell y'all it was hot? Do you see my sweat hitting my glasses? But it's all good, we're happy. You know, other than the fact I can't see in there because of all the sweat. Let me take those off a minute. See if I can get down in here a little bit better. I wonder if the horn works. I hadn't checked that out in a while. I may need some needle nose pliers. Excuse me just a second. Let's get this out before we get in trouble. Okay, all right, I'm gonna grab that connector with those needle nose pliers. Now I can see in there without my big old fingers getting in the way. Okay, that one's on. And this other side just sticks in one of those holes that I used for the puller. That's just the ground. See if the horn works. <laughs> okay, you hear that clicking sound? That means this is working. But I'll bet you $100 that dirt daubers have gotten in my horn out there while it's been sitting in the shed. So I know all this is working because I can hear it clicking. So we have a problem with our horn. That's okay. I love dirt daubers. You know what? They're God's creation too. So I can't talk bad about them. <clears throat> All right. That's so pretty. Man, that's pretty. And that is like it came from the factory. I wonder how easy these little screws are gonna go back in there. This is probably gonna be the hardest part of the project. Let's see if I can get this one started. All right, let me get that in the hole. Okay, that one, that one went in. Let me see about this one. 
This one might be the hard one. It's got to be something that goes wrong in this project. This has just been, whoop, there it went. I knew something was gonna happen. Oh, I found it. <laughs> that was lucky again. We're living blessed today. The good Lord is shining on our project. What are the chances that hole lines up? You know what? That hole lined up perfectly too. Wow. Wowzers. Let me see if I can get one more bite on it. It doesn't have to be super tight, but that's it. That's it. Push that for the horn. I wouldn't say this was the prettiest steering wheel that Ford ever made, but it's functional. And uh, you can't argue when it looks brand new how pretty it is. That's it, y'all. We did a steering wheel removal and installation in what, 10 minutes? That's pretty amazing. Okay, well y'all, I hope you enjoyed this little episode on my 1977 F100. Um, the next time you see it, it'll probably be at the car show next weekend. I'll show you a picture of our video of the engine bay completely redone. Everything cleaned up, everything gussied up in here, and I'm gonna beat the snot out of Braden with his 67 Mustang. Cross my fingers, it's just hard to beat a Mustang. But there's a lot of folks in this world that like old trucks too. So I think this is a, a winner, being all original as it is. I mean, that's what you have to respect about this truck. It's not show quality by any means, but it's an all original truck. It's beautiful and I love it just the way that it is. And it's the way my granddaddy touched it. It's the way my granddaddy brought it home from the, the dealership. And that's how we're gonna leave it for the rest of its life, or my, my life. All right, y'all. Look, God bless you. Stay out there doing the right thing and giving God the glory in all that you do. Thank y'all so much for watching. We'll see you next time.